Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Crazy Tech Reviews. And before I start to get into uh, actually taking a look at all the stuff you see here on the table, I'd first like to explain a bit of backstory here. So, basically this whole thing started yesterday when I stopped by an interesting store in the St. Louis, Missouri area. And basically this place uh, I had been told about by some other local collectors in that area. And uh, as a matter of fact, a very good friend of mine, Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. And apparently, these, this uh, place has a huge stash of vintage computers and stuff that they're selling, and apparently for pretty reasonable prices. Well, I happened to be in that area yesterday, so I stopped by the store, and sure enough, when I walked in, I was just greeted by a bunch of different vintage computer items, mainly PC items, but among those, I happened to find all of this stuff. And the main focus of today's video, this PC here. This here is an early 90s compact Pro Linea computer. This is the 5133 model, which has a Pentium 133 MHz processor in it. And this immediately caught my eye because I actually know somebody who collects a lot of these early compact computers. And I've seen this one before and honestly, it looks pretty cool. So I asked them what the price for this computer was and they said $35. Alongside that, I also saw a bunch of other interesting items, including for one, this uh, five and a quarter inch disc drive here, which I paid a whopping $12 for. Uh, this Zip 250 parallel drive, which I paid $25 for. This uh, Zip 100 IDE drive, very similar to the one that was actually donated to me a few months ago, that I purchased for also only $12. And um, I found a couple of Zip disks, which I bought for $2 each. 32 megs of um, 72 pin Sims uh, for only $8. <laughs> And uh, this actually is for my modern computer, but this is a memory card, SD uh, card reader thing. Uh, I paid about $15 for this. So, uh, now that I've briefly talked a bit about that, I want to focus more on this computer. Uh, this is going to be the primary focus of today's video, and as you can see, this machine is covered in grime and dirt and stuff, as I believe most of these computers were actually rescued from recycling centers and resold. So there's, it looks like there's some tape residue. There's plenty of stickers on the front. This one actually comes off easily. It's sort of like a giant sticky note, but this other one here is taped onto the front, so we're gonna have to clean that off. And um, there's also a small bit of cosmetic damage here along the back. So if you look here on the side, uh, you see up front there's a little foot here. However, on the back that's missing. And if we take a look on the other side, here you can get a good idea of what that's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be one of these little plastic feet and it's completely broken off on this side. I'm not sure if it was like that when I bought it or if it was like that before I bought it or if I did it myself or something. So I have no way of knowing for sure that was my fault or if it was just broken when they picked it up. But either way, it needs to be fixed uh, as I do want this to look factory original. So I'm not sure how exactly I'm gonna do that, but I think I have an idea. So we'll talk more about that later on if I actually can do that, pull that off. Either way, um, with that out of the way, it's time to go ahead and take a look at this machine and see if it works. So I have the computer set up here and I'm about to turn it on. And yes, I do know that this monitor is way too new for the computer, but unfortunately I don't currently have any VGA CRT monitors around the house. So this will have to work for now. Anyway, I'll go ahead and turn on the machine. And yes, this computer came uh, before the time of soft power. So it's just a simple on off switch. And amazingly it fired right up and we have an image on the screen. After testing the 80 megabytes of RAM that this computer came with, it then proceeded to boot up into Windows 98 which took forever for some reason. Initially, I thought this was because the Windows 98 was too new for the system, but after talking to some other people who own similar systems uh, like this one, um, I've come to the assumption that this is probably just the result of a bloated Windows installation, so most likely I'll end up wiping or reinstalling the operating system or cleaning off some of the junk on it. Most likely the first option since who knows what might be on here. I also decided I'd test out some of the drives that were in the computer, uh, starting with the five and a quarter inch floppy drive, as this was actually my first Windows DOS machine to uh, come with one of these installed into it. And sure enough, it loaded up this Commander uh, Keen disk I had beautifully. Anyway, now that we know the computer itself works, it's time to start cleaning it. The first thing I want to do is remove all the dirt and grime and residue that's built up on the surface of the case here. The first thing I'm going to try to use to clean this up with is some isopropyl alcohol. And as you can see here, just after a few seconds of scrubbing this case down, there's already a very noticeable contrast between where I cleaned and where I haven't cleaned it. So now that I know this is working, I'll try cleaning a 
slightly larger area of the case. Alcohol is working pretty well to remove the grime from the surface of the case, however it wasn't able to get rid of some of the deeper scuffs and uh, marks on the case, and it also doesn't really cover that much surface area, so I'm going to try to use a uh, magic eraser or a melamine sponge instead. And this worked about a million times better, and as you can see I was also able to remove some of the more stubborn marks. At this point I decided just to clean half the case down to show you just how bad this contrast is between the area I cleaned and the area that hasn't been cleaned yet, and with proper color correction applied, you can see just how dirty this computer was. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. Of course though I'll need to finish the other side of the case as well. Anyway, skipping forward a bit, I have now cleaned the other side of the case, and uh, it's now time to disassemble this thing and take a look inside. Just like many early 90s desktop PC cases, this thing is pretty easy to disassemble, requiring you to remove three screws in the back of the case, then slide the top metal piece off. Looking inside the computer, you can see the motherboard is actually divided into two sections, uh, connected together with a massive card edge style connector. One of these boards contains all the card slots, as well as the built-in hard drive and floppy controller, while the other is where the CPU and all the 80 megabytes of RAM are located. Speaking of the CPU, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but the CPU that was originally in the system was a Pentium 133 MHz model, as is indicated by the 133 section on the computer's model name. However, it turns out at some point the CPU was actually upgraded to a Pentium 166 MHz model, so that's pretty cool. I'm guessing the store I bought this item from must have upgraded the CPU when they upgraded the system's memory. Also, while we're on the topic of the computer's RAM, uh, right next to the SIM sockets, I noticed this weird board, which I also assume is some kind of memory expansion card, probably in the form of cache or VRAM, and right behind that is the system's clock battery, which I will probably end up removing and replacing if it proves to be necessary to the computer. Also, while we're at it, I might as well show you the cards that were installed into this computer. It does appear to have some kind of sound card with a game port, and also an ethernet card of some kind as well, so maybe I can hook this thing up to the network at some point. If we look on the other side of the computer, you can actually see the drive cage as well as the power supply and hard drive, which appears to be a standard Quantum Fireball IDE drive of an unknown size, and holy crap, that is an absolute rat's nest of cables here in the middle. It looks like Compaq just tried to cram all the power supply and data cables in this one little spot in the middle of the case. I guess that wouldn't be an issue if you don't plan on upgrading or just assembling the computer here, but unfortunately I plan to do neither as I basically want to disassemble this entire machine and clean everything up as well as doing some basic maintenance on some parts like the CD and floppy drives if it hasn't been done already. The first thing I want to remove is the AT class power supply as it contains the computer's only exhaust fan, and as anyone who's ever worked on PCs knows, anything near a fan is likely to have lots of dust in it. Unfortunately though, there's one more thing we need to do before cracking this thing open. It turns out the power switch which is connected directly to the power supply through a small wire. At first I thought this was a permanent connection, but it turns out there's a few small terminals over here connecting to the switch. So I'll just use some needle nose pliers and disconnect those real quick, and uh, with that done, I'll separate the two sections of the power supply case. I'd also like to take this as a good time to mention that power supplies are dangerous, and I do not suggest opening them and messing around inside unless you know what you're doing. Shocking, right? Anyway, the inside of this thing and the fan, of course, were somewhat dusty. So I had to pull out the vacuum cleaner to remove all the dust. I also occasionally used a toothbrush to brush off some of the more stubborn kicked on dust that's been here for a while. The fan though, as you would expect, was uh, what captured the majority of the dust here and was also the most difficult to clean, but with uh, lots of vacuuming and brushing I was able to get it to look much better than it did to begin with. And uh, now that it's all cleaned up, it's time to go ahead and reassemble it. The next thing I want to do is remove the plastic case piece on the back of the computer. This piece also has a lot of dust on it that I'd like to vacuum up, as well as some dust around where the fan sits that I'd also like to clean. Overall, this wasn't too bad, and it cleaned up pretty fast. There's also some weird gunk over here on this right side, uh, what I guess to be some kind of adhesive or something of that nature. Either way, uh, I tried cleaning it with a magic eraser, and while it worked for most of it, I did end up uh, messing up the label a bit while cleaning there, so I'm not sure if there's really much I can do for cleaning that section without risking damaging the label anymore. While I was at it, I also removed the front face of the computer from the metal casing to clean some of the gunk that had built up between there and the faceplate, and I noticed even more of that weird sticky adhesive residue on the back right corner of the metal casing. This is leading me to believe that some kind of anti-theft pad may have been used on this computer in the past, and maybe it was used in some kind of enterprise or institutional setting. Either way, I have no plans of using uh, one of those on this anymore, and it looks pretty bad, so I'm going to try to hit it up with a magic eraser, and boy was this stuff stubborn. 
Eventually, after scrubbing it down for several minutes, uh, all the gunk was finally gone and it looks a whole lot better here. While I was at it, I decided to go ahead and remove both the sticker with the store name on it and the sticker residue from the front panel. The sticker itself was pretty easy to remove and didn't leave any residue behind. However, the sticker residue or whatever the stuff is was incredibly stubborn to remove and took lots of scrubbing to get off. Plus, it was making this really weird chemical smell while I was removing it. There's still a little bit of residue left behind, but it's barely noticeable and it's not worth going through any extra effort to remove. I also did a bit more cleaning on some of the spots that had some grime left over. And uh, this was the point that disaster struck. So it turned out I had gone on and recorded more about disassembling basically this entire computer um, down to just the bare case pieces and uh, I'd removed the motherboard and uh, all the drives and everything and uh, just cleaned it all out. but. I lost all that footage. Um, I don't know what I did. I don't know if I just never recorded it to begin with. I don't know if I thought I copied it onto my PC and deleted it off my phone or if I did something somewhere else, but I lost all that. So I have no footage of me uh, taking the computer apart much further than this. So that's pretty infuriating, um, but... Uh, I didn't lose everything. I still have quite a bit of footage of me cleaning up the drives at least and uh, doing various other things I did, but um, uh, yeah, that's very annoying. So basically, uh, I lost the footage of me taking the motherboard out, me cleaning the motherboard, me cleaning the case itself, and uh, whatever else I did in there. But uh, I guess I still have most of the other stuff, so let's just get back to what we were doing after that, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty annoying. Moving on from that, the next task here is to remove all the computer's optical and floppy drives so I can inspect and clean them if necessary. I gave more attention to the floppy drives as I wanted to make sure that the drive rails were lubricated correctly and that the heads were clean. It turns out all of these drives had little drive litter stickers applied to them, and for most of these, it wasn't too much of an issue. I just removed the sticker from the drive. However, the five and a quarter inch floppy drive uh, had yellow more than the rest of these, meaning that you could still see the original color where the label was. Technically, this isn't too big of an issue, but it still bothers me, and since I have the other five and a quarter inch floppy drive I bought, I can just easily replace this one for that floppy drive. At this point, I went ahead and reassembled the rest of the computer. I'll also go ahead and reinsert the power supply back into its area, and as you can probably imagine, the cable management was a pretty big disaster here and it took ages to get all the data and power cables routed correctly. I'll also go ahead and reconnect the power switch and route its wires back into the little clips provided, and reinstall the hard drive into the side. After that, all I have to do is reattach the front plastic piece to the metal case piece, and then slide the top section back on. So, as you can tell at this point, the computer is basically in pretty good condition. We've cleaned it up, we've uh, gotten rid of all the weird residue and stuff that was on this, and it's looking pretty good, but there's still one thing that I wanted to address in this video that I haven't gotten to yet, and that's the little plastic cosmetic pieces in the back corner. Now, um, basically, if you remember I showed you in the intro, there's these little plastic uh, rectangular uh, pieces that sort of go back here on the back two corners. They sort of look like feet, but they're technically just cosmetic. But basically, one of them was missing when I got the computer, and I'm not sure if I broke it off myself or if it just was off already, but it was missing, and I wanted to try to uh, make another one so that they both match. And there's many different ways I could go about doing this, but uh, the way I decided on uh, doing it is probably the most easiest, and that is uh, 3D printing a new piece. Now in order to model a new 3D printable piece, I was going to have to take measurements of the remaining intact piece, and to do this I had to remove it from the case. It appeared that this part could easily be removed just with a few plastic tabs located on the inside of the metal chassis, but when I tried to get the piece out, the tabs ended up breaking clean off, meaning that not only did I have one missing piece in the back, but now I had two missing pieces in the back. And the fact that this piece broke off so easily might be a clue as to why the other pieces are missing. Technically, I could just glue this piece back into place with epoxy or a similar glue, but at this point, I already have to replace one of these pieces, so I might as well just replace the other one. This was also probably 
probably the better option anyway as the pieces will match perfectly on both sides. As for the modeling process, this is one of my first times actually making a 3D printable model, so I basically had zero experience with how to do things. I started by sketching out the piece on a sheet of paper and then measuring the width, length, and height of the piece and any other information that I needed to know. I then took those measurements into Fusion 360 and modeled out the new piece. Fortunately, this model isn't even really too complicated, as it's basically just a rectangle with rounded edges. The original piece did have a slight slant to the side, um, and it was also hollow, but I decided it would just be too time consuming and not 100% necessary to add those details, so I left them out in the final model. So at this point, we have the 3D model made, but we still need to figure out how we're going to print it. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a 3D printer of my own, and uh, I may actually be looking into getting one at some point, but currently I do not. So, um, I needed to find somebody or somewhere where I could get this printed. And typically what I would do is I would just have one of my friends print it. However, recently PCBWay uh, reached out to the channel and offered us free PCB prototyping and uh, 3D printing and prototyping services. Uh, so, I contacted them um, and uh, asked them if they were interested in doing uh, some of the cosmetic feet for uh, this project here. And uh, sure enough, they said yes. So that means that all we have to do now is export the 3D model and head over to PCBWay's website where I can order the 3D printed parts. Of course, for this video, PCBWay has covered the cost of all of these parts, so I wanted to give a huge thanks to PCBWay for volunteering to uh, pay for all the 3D modeling and everything, and for making this project possible. And also, by the way, if anybody is interested, I do plan on uploading the 3D model files for uh, the cosmetic pieces that we're making here onto Thingiverse, so if anyone wants to 3D print them themselves, then I will include a link to those models down in the description. I mean, they're not really terribly complicated, but uh, if somebody does want them, I have all the measurements down and I have it all sort of worked out. So um, I will include a link to those down in the description. Um, so be sure to check that out if you have a compact that's missing these uh, parts and you'd like to 3D print these yourselves. Anyway, skipping forward a few days, the 3D printed parts from PCBWay have arrived. And um, as you can see here, they came in this nice little box and PCBWay is also nice enough to include some extra goodies here, including these uh, stickers here and this interesting ballpoint pen, which I will definitely put to use. Use. But anyway, uh, moving on from those distractions here, it's time to take a look at the actual pieces themselves. And as you can see here, first of all, these are very good quality. Um, these are resin 3D prints, uh, so they're also really high resolution. And honest to God, at first I thought these were injection molded. I couldn't really see that they were actually 3D printed, so the resolution is definitely very high in these. Of course, they are not the correct color, so we're going to have to end up painting them. Um, but uh, that's no big issue as I wasn't expecting them to show up the right color anyway. And at this point all I have to do is mix up some epoxy and glue the pieces to the case. So yeah, that basically wraps it up for this computer project. Now, um, first of all, I'd like to apologize. I know there's been like a several week gap in video productions here. Um, this video has taken a lot longer to make and uh, do than I was expecting it was going to. So um, I apologize for that. I was expecting this to just be a quick video, but it turns out this actually spanned uh, several months to make this for some reason. I don't know why it took so long, but anyway, um, as you can see, we were able to pretty nicely clean up this computer and uh, make it look new. And honestly, I have to say I'm pretty happy with how these uh, these back cosmetic plastic pieces turned out too. Um, the color was a little bit off, but I'm guessing with time these pieces too will probably give out 
up and uh, break too. So maybe once that happens, I can model new ones for these and then I can just spray paint this entire bottom section of the same color as these. But that's to worry about in the future. Uh, for now, it looks good. Um, and also all the grime and stuff that was on this case cleaned up pretty well as, as well. The only thing I wanted to do in this video that I didn't get to was uh, wiping the hard drive, but uh, I can do that later. It's going to be a pain in the rear anyway, and I need to get this video out at some point, so I'm just going to put it off. At least you guys got to see the computer actually working and uh, doing everything it's supposed to do normally. So, um, with that said, um, that's pretty much everything that we're going to be doing in today's video. Again, if you are interested in checking out these... Um, uh, 3d printed cosmetic pieces or PCB way uh, the links will be down in the description below and a uh, huge thanks to PCB way Of course for offering to help me with uh, the creation of these uh, 3d printed pieces other than that uh, You if, uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, Twitter I have a discord server too So the link will be down in the description for all of those if you're interested and I also have a website and email address So if you want to check those out as well, uh, please feel free to do so other than that um, That's basically gonna wrap it up. Um, I actually have a very similar video to this one coming up too But it's gonna be actually on the Macintosh SE. We're going to be taking a look at that again uh, Retro writing it and doing some more 3d printing relating stuff or related stuff So if you're interested in that, uh, seeing that in the future be sure to stick around and of course I'm also working on getting all the other videos. I promise uh, you guys I would release out but of course as YouTube is uh, you promise you're gonna do a video and you never end up doing it but anyway other than that um, that's gonna be pretty much uh, it for today um, thank you guys so much for watching if you're new here be sure to subscribe and with that all out of the way I'll see you guys all next time